Hello, people of the internet. I am Di Gremlin, and welcome to the Week One Battle of the Pokedex Holders League, Season Four, Week One. Taking on the Norwich City Nine Tails, and as you can see, um, this is a replay. This is a post-commentated battle. I did do a live com, and I was quite happy with my commentary. I thought the recording was going to come out quite nice, and apparently my audio didn't record, which is fun. Um, you know, I, I could have sworn I hit the button, but I haven't recorded a live com video battle ever, so I mean, I make mistakes, I'm only human. Next week, hopefully going to have an actual live com, but... I'm gonna try my best to explain what all of my thought proce processes process I were during this match. Um, and right at team preview, we have a little bit of a surprise, but most of the team is kind of what I anticipated. Dabu Fini, Nido Queen, Palisand, I thought were coming like 100%. I thought either the sun was gonna come or something like Registeel Crobat. We don't see the sun which does make me happy, because I can't just lose to Growth Venusaur, which I was rather scared of. But we don't see Latios, and we see Gardevoir. And I don't know why. Like, I was like, wow, I really didn't anticipate that. In my team, I said, there's no way Gardevoir comes. But there it is. Um, and like I said in my team builder, Nidoqueen Registeel, only two rockers. I'm going to lead with my Don Fan. The plan, hopefully, is Bray leads with one of Nidoqueen on Registeel, and then just Earthquake it, and it's basically, like, gone. But we will see how that pans out when the match begins. I lead off with my Hathi. She leads off with the Nidoqueen, and I'm like, please! And it goes for the Surf. It goes for the Surf, and I knock it clean out with Earthquake, and this is a huge, huge turn. I'm not entirely certain what set this um this Nidoqueen was, but I just got rid of it turn one, and like whatever set it was, it was the biggest threat to my team. Um, I'm not entirely certain uh, why she was running Surf, um, but I mean, hey ho, well, I, I don't care. That like literally, I was like, I don't care. This thing is dead. I can stop worrying about it now, and that frees up kind of a lot of my other Pokemon. Um, the Tapu Fini comes in, and I just decide to switch straight out into my bronze one. I can take absolutely any hit from this thing, and then I can get my rocks up. I could have gone directly out into my forges, but I just felt like this was a better play. Um, but Bray goes for the taunt, which is a nice play. Um, and I'm, now I just decide, okay, um, it's probably going to calm mind up. Let's, let's do this. Let's calm mind it out. So now we get to find out whose mind is calmer. And I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that it's my girl Rose Tyler. She actually stops for a second to go for a scold, and um, she was at more special attack than I was at special defense, and that only did 29%. That does zero. That does absolutely zero to my Rose Tyler. And I'm perfectly fine to just sit here and deal with this calm mind walk, because I'm getting back leftovers all the time. So by the time I'm at um, plus six, plus six, I'm basically going to be at full health. And I have reliable recovery. Um, I believe we, we've seen the Scald, the Taunt, and the Calm Mind, and we're assuming the Moon Blast. So we know this thing's entire set. Um, I don't believe we saw an item yet. Um, imagine if it was Nature's Madness, uh, Tapunium Z. <laughs> that would be so bad. <laughs> but, um, spoilers, it's not. Uh, I get a special attack drop here, we see the leftovers, and... I, I did I did 27%, she did 23%, so I'm doing a little bit more damage, and I have reliable recovery, and I get another special attack drop. This is perfect, because now she has to go for another Calm Mind, and I get my Wish up completely for free. I don't even need to protect. I can just continue attacking this thing, and the plan is working. I just need to not get crit. Rose Tyler, you beautiful Pokemon, you just need to not get crit. And I get another special attack drop. I think I actually got it every single time I attacked, which is kind of dirty, but it, like this was a war that I won eventually anyway. 
here, I thought about throwing up the wish to get my Rose Silent at better health, but I was like, I do not want to risk the crit. Like, that gives another turn of chancing a crit. So I just go for the move loss, I take out the Tapu Fini, and now I have a plus six, plus six Forges, and she doesn't have too much of a response to it. Pause it right here. You can see I go for the Protect because the Crowback came in, and I was like, hmm. I run the Calc, um, I, I can take a hit from a Banded Crowbat, and I do... I do a lot back to it. I, I do a lot. It's something like... I, I had a chance to kill if it had no HP investment. It wasn't a good chance, but obviously after Brave Bird Recall, then that would be definite. But I just went for the Protect, in case it was like, um, Poisonium Z. I just didn't want to risk it. I just thought I'd scout, get some uh, lefties recovery. And what do we actually see? I believe we see the Torn? No, we do see the Brave Bird. So had I gone for the Moonblast there, I actually would have knocked this thing out. And we see the Torn on the following turn, so... I think that probably would have worked out in my favor if I hadn't protected, because as you see, this does 97.7%. So I would have actually got the kill with my Rose Tyler, whereas the Brave Bird only does 44% damage. So, yeah. And now I'm taunted. So I would have been in a better position if I didn't protect, but I thought it was my best play. Um, now the Reg Steel has to come in, and I run all of the calcs, and see this moon boss is 43%. I I could take any, absolutely any hit at this point. Um, because Iron Head, I'm I'm fully physically defensive, so Iron Head only did like 30% or something like that. If this was a defensive variant. Um, and this does 43%, which was either either she wasn't like a standard spread or it was an absolute min roll if she was physically defensive and i did anticipate physically defensive so i guess it could make sense i don't know but that's good damage i can just carry on firing off moon boss and it looks like i basically have the game in the bag goes for the toxic that is going to be kind of annoying to deal with but the taunt ends so I'm, i just decide to throw up the wish and she reveals the flash cannon and crits me. <sighs> well, I mean, it's annoying to get crit there because if I don't get crit, I, I have the game in the bag. But had I got crit earlier with the Tapu Fini, then I would have lost the game. Like, basically, I would have lost about three mons to Tapu Fini because I would have just had to try and nuke it. But it wouldn't have been that bad. I would have needed to hit a gunk shot with my Infernape. And then Zygarde Dogger could have finished it. But yeah, that crit is really unfortunate. Flash Cannon would have done like maybe 10%. I was at plus 6 for death. Um, but the main issue here is that Forges was my sort of best switch in to the Palisand. It really can't do anything to me. So now I've, I've got to be a little bit careful. And I just, I ran, a, I ran a few calcs and I just decided that Zygarde Dogger was the best way to go because I had a chance to kill it here, depending on its spread, but it could not kill me whatsoever. So I just go for the Earthquake. This is what I was talking about in my team builder. Sometimes I don't need to click the Thousand Arrows. The Crowbat is gone. And then here, I spent a long time over this move. And this is where, like, if it was live comm, you could, you could see I spent a really long amount of time over this move. I was like, I can knock this thing out. I can knock this thing out very, very easily with an earthquake. Why would you bring it in before the palace hand? And I was just umming and eyeing, and I was like, ah, this thing's this thing's got to be choice valve. I was like, there's no way you would bring a god of war in on a zygarde dogger that you just saw do seventy percent to a registeel, unless it's scar. So I just decided to make the safe play and switch out into my bell end, whose only job at this point is to beat this god of war. That's all bell end does. And she goes for the Moonblast, does 14% because special attack drop, doesn't matter. And then follows up with another Moonblast. Now that does tell me that it's it was probably Scarf. So really, really happy that I switched out there. Couldn't be too, too much happier with that. And in comes this Sandcastle. Goes for the Amnesia, which I was... I, I just decided to sack off my bell end. I was kind of... I'm not going to... I was kind of shitting bricks here. I was like, do I lose to this thing? I don't think I was like I don't think I lose this thing because I have um three really hard hitting like max attack physical mons left. 
but it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough, but I think we can do it. And so she just goes for the Shadow Ball, knocks out my Bell End, which was fine by me. I was just sacking it off. And I decide my best play is to go into my Don Fan and knock off its leftovers. And this knockoff does so much damage. Like, I was. I ran the calcs after the match because I anticipated the max HP max spadef variant but then when I saw the amnesia I was like okay maybe max HP max special attack but like the knockoff did too much for that so this thing might have been like max special attack max spadef like I do not know what this thing was that knockoff did an absolute shit ton of damage and it seals this game for me um, I am a soul vest, I can live any hit from this thing, and Hathi can just knock it out with the Earthquake. And this match went really, really well. Week 1, I get so nervous when I do these battles. Um, like, I mean, I, I put it on myself, like, I really enjoy the prepping and the playing, but I'm just like, oh, well, what if, what if I miss something, what if I lose? And I think, in hindsight, I really underprep for Palisand, like, the knockoff was my only super effective move for it. So, kind of poor prep on my part, but I was just like, well, Carmine Floridges sort of beats it, and, like, my physical mons hit it pretty hard, so I don't really care. So hopefully I don't make too many mistakes like that uh, again. But yeah, this, this was quite a cool battle, especially in my live commentary, because quite a few of my plans actually worked, which doesn't happen that often in draft format, like my lead Donphan to take out the Nidor Queen, that's the best you're going to see any of my plans work ever this season. <laughs> it just it just worked so well, I was so happy about that. Um, but yeah, it's a clean 4-0 win, um, Bray actually prepped and played pretty well, like the one thing that I don't know why it was there was the Gardevoir, because, I don't know, I just, I just, it gets outsped by like everything on my team, so you've and it's pretty frail, so you've gotta run it choice carved, and then it can't beat any of my walls, so I don't know, that's 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 whatever. But yeah, really really happy to win. Um really really happy that I made the changes to Don Fan, because if this thing was not a soul vest, um it would have been taken down really low by the Needle Queen, and it would have been able to be knocked out by the Palace End at the end there. So changing Donphan to a Soul Fest basically sealed this game for me, and that's that feels good. It feels good. This match feels really, really good. I'm just so happy to get that first win under my belt. Next week, I believe, if we check this out. Oh yeah, that's that. Don't mind that. Um, next week. Next week we're taking on the Rayleigh Brighties, coached by Lee, and um, I, I'll dive into it more in my team builder whenever I do that, but I've not even looked at the matchup yet, and I know that's going to be a terrifying match. Lee scares me so much, um, and whew, but I've got my first win under the belt. We're currently sitting at number one in the league, mostly because it's the only match that's been played. But yeah, we'll see if we can get another win next week. Um, that's it. I'll see you next time.